right here. Give him a few of these if you don't mind. Yes. And, and, and I'm really, oh, thank you very much. I'm really proud and, 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 and elated to introduce this group. This is a group of people who love and respect me. Hi, guys. Hi. Yes, they love and respect me. It makes me feel so good. Just to have that, you know? That... Just have a seat. Have a seat. Well, it was a weird moment. I don't know what it is, but... Oh, boy. How you doing, Chuck? I'm doing fine. I'll sit you. We got the funk POV again today. Right. It, that's, that's the funk point of view? Is that what that stands for? That's my for? perspective, the way I see things. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, you decide or Sandy decides what, whether we're going to see what you see? Well, she's the controller, so... Oh, okay. I'm just Sandy, let, let, let me see what he sees. Uh-huh. <laughs> now... <laughs> Okay, that's interesting. That, 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 that's what you see when you just doing your Stevie Wonder impression or whatever the hell that was. But, <laughs> let, let, let me see what you see when, when you play. I, I, now, don't, don't do anything just for the camera. Just, I want to see the funk POV when you're actually distributing the funk. You want me to distribute some funk? Yeah, when you're distributing the funk. <laughs> oh, gosh. I'm still Arsenio Hall, and welcome to the show. I, right out of the shoot, have an impression for you tonight. Uh, I've been working hard on it. Yes, I, I've been working hard on this one. Uh. Can I wear that one night? You got it. Is the cord, does it go to your pack, or is it a long cord going somewhere? You got to carry a camera around. <laughs> you need a camera to carry with you. <laughs> He's crazy. <laughs> Sometimes you tell me jokes, I just fall out laughing. Hear me say anything? You gotta carry a camera. <laughs> is it connected to something, man? Yeah, it's a camera. <laughs> Start with the stick. What, what is it? I got a oh, monitor. Oh, it's a big monitor back there, and everything. A little pack. But we could, can fix it. Sandy, could you hook it to me? Like just one night. I sure could. Okay, one night, hook it to me so like they can see what I see. <laughs> you know, <laughs> boy, if you could see what I see. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, okay, my impression. That's what I'm doing. I'm doing my impression. This is my impression of Ronald Reagan talking to Frank Sinatra at a dinner party. Okay, like they're sitting together or something. And it's Ronald Reagan talking to Frank Sinatra at a dinner party. <clears throat> Did you all read the Kitty Kelly book? <laughs> or is this joke going to die? <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> Just pretend I'm sitting, okay? <laughs> Frank, if I ask you a question, will you give me a straight answer? Did you... <laughs> Frank! I have to, but you... up late working on that, you know? <laughs> just, just getting the nuances of the Reagan voice. You understand, brother, where I'm coming from, right? I was sitting with my woman, and she would say, no, it still sound like Merv. And I, I would work on it a little bit more, a little bit more, until I finally had it. Uh, let's see, what else is going on uh, uh, in, in the paper? Uh, you've probably heard about this. Despite protests from thousands yesterday, California Governor Pete Wilson signed the helmet bill into law. You think that's good? OK. okay. It will uh, actually go into effect on the 1st of January. And for those of you who don't know about it, the law was passed to protect motorcycle riders who get into accidents. 
And uh, actually, they're going to take it one step further now and make it mandatory for those of you who drive cars here in L.A. to wear helmets. Uh, <laughs> they're ahead of me. <laughs> The audience is ahead of me, you know? <laughs> From now on, I'll just give you the jokes like this. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I won't, I won't even go any further. You, you know the joke, right? LAPD, yeah. <laughs> 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 that joke had like a second gear, you know? <laughs> Oh, boy. Wouldn't that be funny to see black people riding around in helmets in their cars? Hi, officer. <laughs> oh, boy. The uh, people who run the cafeteria for the Internal Revenue Service has asked em its employees to stop stealing the silverware. <laughs> this is in the paper. It was in USA Today. According to, to a government memo, 70% uh, of all the silverware at the Internal Revenue Service cafeteria is missing. <laughs> I look at it like this. Hey, IRS, if you're listening, lighten up on them. They didn't steal your silverware. They're just withholding it. <laughs> I told you that joke would work. <laughs> Oh, boy. Uh, this morning, also in USA Today, there was an article about a 13-year-old boy from my home state of Ohio. He uh, goes to the Mayfield Elementary School in Butler County, Ohio. And uh, he was placed on probation for setting his teacher's desk on fire. And the reason he set the desk on fire, I guess, his, uh, his report card was apparently inside. <laughs> and he set the desk on fire. Isn't it amazing how kids have changed? I mean, when I was a kid, I, I was a kid once, you know? And I had, if I had a bad report card or something, I wouldn't set the desk on fire, you know? Set the damn teacher on fire. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm just, yeah, that's uh, a couple teachers over there. Oh, it's not nice, young man. Bad host. <laughs> but they, they, I guess he was just afraid. They asked him for the reasons why he did it. And uh, he said, you know, I knew I'd have bad grades, and I was scared of what my mommy and daddy might do to me. So we sh probably shouldn't scare our kids. We should, you know, let them know that just try, you know, try to do the best you can, and, and I won't hurt you or anything, because he, he was frightened. And, uh, and the second reason was he said he wanted to grow up to be the leader of new kids on the block. Now that, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> There's nothing we as parents can do about that, but, you know, it's a... Oh, 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 oh. If he was afraid then of what his report card might say, he must be really frightened now, you know? I mean, wow, setting the teacher's desk on fire, and, and there's gonna be a $225 uh, restitution fine charged to his parents, and he's on probation. Oh, boy, see... When I was a kid, it was different. How many had the parents, the kind of parents where if you set the teacher's desk on fire, that would have been two fires that day? <laughs> yes. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. That'd be, that'd be the desk and your ass when you get home. You know? <laughs> Did you all have parents like that? See, parents have changed. Now they have a line you call, an abuse line. You know, it's like, my mother beat me. That's child abuse, you know? When I was, it would be like, who you think you are, Hussein? You don't put nothing on fire. What the hell? It ain't no oil field. That's your teacher's desk. What the hell is all even? Uh, uh, uh. That's the way it was. You know? It was different then. My mother, my mother's hit me with like brooms and pots, and I didn't call nobody, but God. <laughs> abuse hotline, my mother hit me with a broom. It's like, oh, you call somebody on me? <laughs> child abuse, I, oh, child abuse here. I'm gonna abuse your ass, all right. That's the way it was then.
Yes. <laughs> See, even parents clapping, you know? <laughs> we got to clamp down. I told you to stop watching reruns of different strokes, didn't I? <laughs> 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 this is a great guru right here. Like, Ooh, what kind of joke is that? Wait, hey. <laughs> Chill on Todd, man. Give him a break. Oh, boy. Uh, the Kuwait government, uh, speaking of discipline, the Kuwait government sentenced five men, accusing them of, of aiding Iraqi prisoners. Uh, is, that, is that Do I have it right? <laughs> okay, uh, aiding I Iraqi prisoners. And um, one man got 12 years for uh, carrying a keychain around with Iraqi bullets on it, I guess. You, you read this? Good, good. <laughs> so it's me and you, sir, uh, with Iraqi bullets on it. And another got 15 years for wearing a Saddam Hussein T-shirt. And yeah, so there, there's a lesson to be learned uh, when you're in Kuwait. <laughs> Don't shop at that Iraqi souvenir stand. <laughs> very scary, very, very scary. <laughs> How you doing, John? You like you enjoying yourself back there? I'm not having as much fun as you are. Oh, uh, well, yeah. I'm just, I'm reminiscing, having a good time, and, and trying to remember what the hell I read about the Iraqi t-shirt stand uh, in, in, yeah, well, in What Iraq. about that kiss last night? Huh? What? No, no. what about last night, that kiss? <laughs> I've been in this business all my life, man. All my life. And it's the first time you meet Diana, you live out my whole lifelong dream. Okay, chill. It's cool. Let me finish the monologue. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. Huh? No, no. Hey, Let's man. get back to the kids. Hey, Come John, on. you better stop. Come I want to introduce you to my younger brother. Shut up, man. <laughs> stop. Stop it, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're gonna stay. We're gonna stay on the kids. We're gonna stay with the kids for a while. We're gonna, this, is, this is my my two brothers. This is death and more death. Leave me alone, man. Leave me alone. Good to see family, man. Good to see family. Leave me alone, man. It was just no good. It was no just good. a little uh, peck, man. Little peck. I got more. <laughs> it was a peck, man. It was a peck. Leave me alone. No, 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 no. That was more than I got on my wedding night, man. We just talking about little peck. That wasn't no peck. <laughs> that wasn't no peck. Hey, well, uh -uh. that's your problem, man. <laughs> no, 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 no. Let's look at that. Why don't we look at that again? I seen the mountain top, you Let's, know. Why don't we look at it? Let's check it Ain't out. No mountain top. Uh, <laughs> why don't we take a look at it? Huh? It's why right we right take? Why don't we take a look at? It? Oh, you mean a clip? No, yeah, no, yeah. Yeah. Like, no, 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 yeah, yeah, come on, buddy, <laughs> Sandy, right. Sandy, do you by any chance have that clip from last night? <laughs> don't y'all want to see it? Uh -uh, Come on. No, baby, no. <laughs> Sandy, you have that clip from last night. Yeah. Sandy, would you roll that clip, please? Hey, 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 what's that?
Imitators come and imitators go, but there is only one loofah. <laughs> With an F. <laughs> Performing Power of Love, Love Power from his new album, This is a Luther of Vandross.
<laughs> um, okay, let's see. The album has been out how long? Uh, two weeks. And it's already sold a million copies. <laughs> and, Thank you. And, and, and Rolling Stone uh, has given it like a four-star review. Yeah, yeah. Which is, I mean, that's, that's <laughs> deep, man. That's deep. Yeah, Rolling Stone reviews are not easy to, you know, I mean, they're, they're pretty critical on, on the music that they review. But they gave this one four stars, and thank you, Rolling Stone. Yeah. That's you know, what I'm talking about. I, I, I went through, uh, last night, I went through, like, a bunch of old loofah. Last night, and you didn't uh, do nothing but wait, watch wait, that wait. rerun <laughs> of Diana Ross, OK? <laughs> that's all he did last night. <laughs> <laughs> The loofah put me in the mood, you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but I was listening to all these albums, and I think every song that I was able to listen to was about love, one song about partying. OK, right. But right. everything, why do you sing about love all the time? Um, Because love concerns people. Love is uh, something everybody is trying to get right. You know what I'm saying? You can go to, right? I mean, you know, you can go to work, and you can get the job right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you can play a game. You can play baseball and get that right, you know? Hulk Hogan beat up Andre the Giant and got that right, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but everybody goes home, and it seems like they're struggling with how to get that right, you know? Yeah. So I uh, just write about it as much as my imagination allows, you know? Now that I think about it, there's not much else you can write about. I mean, you could do a, a, a political song or... But what else is there to write about? Have you ever yeah, thought about another song? I, another type of song? Yeah, I've thought about that. But there's, there's other, you got to be allowed your expression. You know what I'm saying? You don't tell Picasso not to use blue when yeah. he's in his blue period. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Picasso, why don't you try some purple? You know, why don't you try yeah. some red? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You just don't do that. So everybody has to be allowed his own expression. You know, and, and that's what I think about all the time. So it ends up Love? in the songs. Mm hmm <laughs> searching, searching. <laughs> yeah. Well, we don't mind. <laughs> uh, all right. All we right. don't mind because I, you know, I, I'm a huge fan of yours, and I can't wait to hear the um, Martha Wash duet. Oh, Ma now Martha was on your show. Yeah, uh, Martha yeah. Wash is a lady who, for so long, has been uh, denied what she deserves. Uh, she's the voice on CNC Music Factory. Everybody dance now. That's Martha Wash. Um, and and, and, and uh, uh, Black Box. Black Box, and she was one of the Weather Girls yes. as well. So I called her up, and I thought it would be a, a great idea, to, you know, to get somebody coming through the door. Mm -hmm. And I saw her on here, and you know, and I saw her in uh, Billboard magazine in a picture. It showed how she was signing with RCA. I said, well, this would be, you know, really great to get somebody who's just coming into the whole scene mm -hmm. in that kind of forceful way, you know? And it worked out great. We had the best time in the world in the studio. Best yeah. time in the world, yeah. Yeah, Martha was here, and this is this will be an interesting subject for you and I, I mean, I but I didn't kiss her like you kissed Diana Oh, last would night. you stop? <laughs> 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 uh, stop, stop. OK, now, when she was here. But you know, Arsenio, the, see, the, okay. The, OK, no, no, go ahead. No, go ahead, we can talk, talk about no, no, Miss no. Ross. No, but no, see, no. first of all, I know the reason you keep bringing it up uh -huh. is because you, too, grew up on some Miss Ross. Oh, yeah. And, uh... I sure did. <laughs> <laughs> see, and I was... See, I love Joe Piscopo, mm -hmm. right? I love Joe Piscopo. Mm -hmm. But I was sure counting on Diana Ross's butt to be the last one that sat here before I sat down tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Okay. Oh. Yeah, so you, you love it just oh. like I do. And um, you were saying before the show something that, uh, that she probably has never thought about, or if she's thought about it, she deserves to hear it mm -hmm. from a singer like you. You know what you were talking about? How her some people either stay the same or, or they start to lose their oh, voice. Yeah, yeah. She, has, she has progressed. I mean, I loved her when she sang Baby Love. I loved her when she sang Touch Me in the Morning. But, oh, please, you know, Endless Love and, and, and those beautiful songs and, and the new Diana Ross's mm -hmm. really voluptuous, full voices, there's nothing like it. I mean, it's gorgeous. And you it's actually beautiful. think it, it, it's getting better? Oh, I absolutely think it's getting better. Absolutely. The tone. See, I'm big on tone, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm not big on 
12 million riffs per per line. You know what I'm saying? That doesn't impress me. That's just gymnastics. But I like <laughs> tone. You know what I'm saying? That you can convince me with the tone. You can say uh, good morning to me with either the right or wrong tone. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's, in music, it's similar to that. And she just has a, a tone in her voice that just thrills me that I just can't get enough of. I think she's just one of the gifted, brilliant singers of, uh, of this or any other time. So you think that, yes. <laughs> Do you think sometimes uh, people mistake tonal quality and replace it with singing a lot of notes? Is oh, that... yeah, yeah. That's the, it's like, I don't know how to judge, for example, you probably don't either, know how to judge a professional boxing match. Right. But I do know that, you know, I have been wrong, you know what I'm saying? Because I saw like 15,000 flurries go from boxer A to boxer B. And Box of B still won because of the rating system of it all is such that you might not be able to know. You can be dazzled by a lot of movement and a lot of, of, of action, when in actuality, it's the subtle things that someone else does that really hits home for the long run, you know? Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm into subtlety. You know, I like subtle things. I don't like uh, big, bodacious gestures. I like subtle, gentle gestures, you know? Yeah. yeah. Like you and Diana last night. <laughs> <laughs> No, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Hi, Arsenio. Okay, we're gonna take a commercial. <laughs> we're we gonna come back and we're gonna treat each other right. Is that okay, okay, okay. We're okay. gonna come back. We're not gonna talk about Mr. Ross no okay, more. Okay, no more. Michael, con it off. <laughs> Actually, uh, knows better than anybody behind every great man. There's a whole lot of people that make you happen. Um, oh, yeah. Tell me who was back there. Okay, the, my singers, those, that's, uh, let's see, that's Lisa Fisher. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, she has her own record out. Yep, she's um, We have Tawatha Agee. Mm -hmm. We have uh, Sissy Houston, Whitney's mom. Yeah, yeah. And uh, my niece, Tammy, and we have, let's see, uh, Cindy Mizell and Paulette McWilliams, Brenda White. And did I leave anybody out? Because I'm going to get headlocked if I did. Incredible musicians, I mean. Oh, Nat I Adley mean, Jr., Marcus Miller is back there. So. I mean, it's, it's the, all that stuff you see when you read the back of the album, they all They're here. Right there. They are right there. They are. All the heavies uh, at every session. Heavies? Um, heavies. No, no, go ahead. What are you going to say next? You know what? Hey. No. Hey, no, no, no. No, no I'm no, not I'm, talking okay, about no, Diana Ross anymore. <laughs> no. And you ain't talking about what you're getting ready no, to talk I'm about. No, I'm going I'm to just say one thing. I'm going to just say one I'm thing. Wrong. Okay, I'm, no, I'm, I'm going to say one I'm, thing, and I know you got to go get ready for right. your next song. But I'm going to say one thing. The first night I came on the air, Luther was my first musical guest. That's and I said, Luther, forget the diet stuff. We love you like you are. Stop playing those games. What's this up? We love you. Any way you are. Thank you. Thank you. So, I, I, I believe you. I've right. always told you, man. You have always told me that you, all the time. I must. You've been one of people who encourage me all the time to just take it as it goes. He really has. He's a good yeah. friend. <laughs> okay, I'll let you go and prepare. What's the next selection you're gonna do? After We're going Jasmine? to do a song called "I Want the Night to Stay." And last night, you know that. All right, good, good. Okay. All right. He's gonna go prepare. Yes. This is Luther Vandross back in a moment. My next guest has created one of the most outrageous characters on television, Whitley on a Different World. Yes. She also has a successful recording career, as you know. Please welcome Jasmine Guy. Get cold out here. <laughs> You're going on tour. I'm going to Japan Sunday. 
Really? Yeah. Because last time you were there, you didn't get to sing for him. No, we just uh, did promotion, talked to, you know, a lot of papers and magazines. And since the record's doing so well there, mm -hmm. I'm going to Selling do my first... Selling a million a minute Yeah, a million like a minute. Yeah, yeah. I'm breaking all kinds of records. Yeah. <laughs> doing very well. I'm happy It's doing that. well. But I'm, I'm doing uh, my first show. It's like an hour-long show. Mm -hmm. Touring is nothing new to you. You, um... Was it, was it Wiz or something? Yeah, it was in The Wiz, the revival of The Wiz, which was, uh, Stephanie had done it as, as a child, mm -hmm. and then she wanted to do it again, and I went on the road for nine months with that, which was uh, a great experience in that it taught me that I never wanted to be in the chorus again. Why? And I never wanted to dance again after that show. <laughs> Why? I Those was, um... You know, it's our gig to look happy, but it was really difficult to, um... Well, the choreographer gave me a hard time. I was kind of the scapegoat. I was talking to my girlfriend, Gigi, who's the choreographer for my show now. So mm -hmm. we've remained friends over the, over the time, and, um, he was just... Okay, I was a crow. I'll give you an example. I was a crow. <laughs> and I took a lot of pride in being a crow because there were only three of us with a scarecrow. Yeah. And um, I just worked on it very hard. And I wanted to do right. And I came out there and I was doing my little choreography and he stops the music. And I just prayed it wasn't because of me that he was stopping the music, but it was. And he said, oh, no. What is that? It's like my crow. He said, no, 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 that is not a crow. Have you ever seen a crow, Miss Thing? Do you know what a crow sounds like? I said, ar, ar, ar. <laughs> I said, that's right. Now you get over there and you be a crow. When you're a crow, you're a crow. When you're a monkey, you're a monkey. So I was like, OK. I was working on my crow. I was going to be the best crow to side of Mississippi. I said, I'm going to get it together, right? And I just envisioned crows, how they eat, how they walk, how they talk. And when that music started, I was going for it. And I got to the, the corn. There was corn around that we had to eat. <laughs> this is, you know, acting is acting. And I was, <laughs> Stop the music. You are not Dorothy. This is Dorothy. This, Miss Mills. You are not Dorothy. So now I'm pulling focus, because my crow was just to die for, yes, okay? Yes, And nobody could outdo that crow. So it was kind of like that for three months, until the choreographer left us alone, you know? But he had a thing about me and Gigi. You know, yeah. in front of everybody, he would say, you know, work on those pirouettes, get that stretch together. You're not bending back enough, and you, you have no character. What are you doing on there? You have no presence. You aren't going to be anything in this business. But how like, you like me right. now? Look at you. <laughs> Look where you are now, you know? Those are great stories. We'll be right back with more Jasmine Guy. That's what makes you feel. Okay, uh, one um, Your dad was on a different world. <laughs> <laughs> my daddy was on a different world with my sister. <laughs> on our last show, we're in the airport scene, and um, let me tell you, and now this, I hope this doesn't get him in trouble, mm -hmm. but he was supposed to leave it on an 8 o'clock flight, and our stage manager, David, said, well, why don't I put your dad in the show? This is our last show. And my father's like, oh, you know, I, I have an 8 o'clock class tomorrow morning at Morehouse, and it's finals, and I can't be late. And he heard he was going to be on TV. He canceled that flight. He left at 2 o'clock in the morning, and he was just so <laughs> excited. When um, my sister was here, too, they were visiting me, and they were going to make him a flight attendant. And he was supposed to give Dwayne Wayne take Dwayne Wayne's ticket before Dwayne Wayne says, you know, marry me and all that. Mm -hmm. But he, they changed and made him a security guard. And he said, oh, well, this, this changes my motivation. I can't, uh... <laughs> I was shocked. I was like, oh, no, creating a monster here. Yeah, and your dad's believe. a preacher, right? Mm-hmm. Which <laughs> I guess had a little more performing in him than I thought. Yeah. So he went into the dressing room and worked on his part, which was standing there like this, and he'd say to Dwayne, 
you know, no, no unticketed passengers allowed. And he go. <laughs> Just like, Daddy, just be natural, you know? Just, you know. But he worked on that for like an hour. <laughs> he's a professional. Oh, he's a pro. Now he's ready for some lines and, you know. Yes. But I'm, it was a great day because it was the last day of our season and my family was there and, you know, they love coming on the set. And yeah. Everybody was real nice to him. That was good. Now, uh, you know, Luther's going to sing another song and he told me to keep you out here, so. Can oh, you stay? okay. I would love to. I love Luther. Yeah, yeah. He said, keep her out there. So we're going to take another commercial and come back with more Jasmine and more Luther and everything I can fit into an hour. We'll be right back. <laughs> Thank you. 